Okay. Oh, yeah, I think it's that way around. Yeah, okay, I think I've got it. Well, what have I got? Well, I've got the uh, long air 20 watt laser. Yeah, the Rays 520 watt laser, no less. And the people at long air has just sent it over to me. How kind are they? Well, I suppose they do want the video that they do. So that's what we're going to do. No money's has changed hands, but this is a sponsored video. But I've got zero experience with laser engravers or cutters. Zero. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing is assembling, not disassembling raise five. No. We're going to be assembling it. And like I say, I've never done this before, so we're going to pull the bits and pieces out, one by one, and see what we've got, and see where they go. I've got my destructions here, so hopefully, between us, we can uh, get this all together. Now, not in this video, but in a future video, I'll be doing some tests, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of my experience as well of messed up. So, it'll be a fair judgement on what this thing can actually do, as a newbie. So, where do I start? How about the beginning, by unpacking the box first? Well, first of all, let's locate the packing list and see what we have in the box and analyse the components and get familiar with them in relation to the manual. And the manual itself is an A3 printed on both sides. It's no good just procrastinating. Let's unpack the laser and see what we got. At a glance we can see that the components are individually wrapped including the uh, rails and all the screw packets and the small parts too. The people at Longer they clearly have some foresight because what they have done is they have coordinated like paint by numbers the small parts numbered packets to each step of the assembly as per the manual and it makes life so much easier so I commend them for that my advice would be to put aside all the components that you don't need for each individual step so it doesn't confuse you you see Step 1. Frame assembly of the Longer Ray 520 Watt Laser Engraver Cutter, including my gaff. Yes, I messed up because I didn't properly analyse the manual like I just told you to do. What am I like? Eh? I suppose the moral of the story is analyse the manual. And it's etched on your mind. So now we have all the components for the frame together. We've got three feet or legs. What, three? Wouldn't you have four? Well, I found out afterwards that the fourth leg is actually the controller. <laughs> Go figure. So lay out the rails to your frame. Packet one, which will contain M5 bolts. It'll also contain neat little corner brackets that have little allen grub screws in now the laser actually comes with all the tools you need to assemble the laser and in this case the frame so lay out all your frame parts to assemble the frame place one corner bracket into the back rail then slide that corner bracket into the side rail Align the end rail with the side rail and insert the M5 25mm long Allen headed machine screws and repeat the process on each corner. Tighten the machine screws and then tighten the grub screws for the frame brackets. While you're doing this, just keep checking that the frame is square and adjust accordingly. Yes, I put the whole frame together with the front and back rails the wrong way round. I couldn't quite work out in my head which way round the rails went. And in a senior moment, yes, I put the whole frame together 
with the front and back rails the wrong way round. But at least I worked it out in the end, and undone everything and did it all again. But this time the right way round. <laughs> oh dear. <sighs> okay, after I messed up, I've now put it the right way round. Step 2. The X-axis frame installation. Now, assuming you've installed the stop to the left rail, install the X-axis frame into the V-groove on the left and right frames at the same time and slide it back up to the stop, which is a M5 16mm bolt and a small piece of tube. The wheeled carriage assembly should slide backwards and forwards smoothly. If there's any play, you may need to adjust the wheels. Luckily, there is some adjustment since the centre of the bearing for the wheel acts as a cam so you can increase or decrease pressure. Step 3. Installation of the feet and controller. Or are they legs? I couldn't quite make my mind up. Either way, they need to be bolted to the X frame. And to do that, you will require seven M5 16mm long Allen headed machine screws, but also one M5 8mm long machine screw. Now, there is also a stop, which uses a 16mm machine screw and a plastic tube or collar. So place the feet one by one against the X frame and screw the legs into place using the provided Allen key. Don't worry about tightening the screws at this stage. Just install the three feet. Once the three feet are installed, it is time to install the controller, which is the fourth feet, was it foot? And that requires one M5 16mm Allen headed machine screw but also the M5 8mm machine screw. Now the reason why it has a shorter screw is because the left hand screw would interfere with the screw that secures the side rail to the front rail. So now you have all four feet installed. So go round and tighten all the bolts. On the left rail near the controller there is another stop to install. So slide the collar onto the M5 16mm bolt and screw that into place. Step 4. Timing belts and the micro switches. In the assembly instructions it shows to install the timing belts before the micro switches. But I suggest you do it the other way round because you have to invert it and it could put strain on the timing belts. So, install the micro switches first. Now, installing the micro switches is really easy. There is one M5 6mm round head screw for each micro switch and hammer head nut. Install the micro switch up to the label. Do the same on the frame. Timing belts. There are two timing belts which are secured with four M5 6mm round head screws and four T-shaped or hammerhead nuts. The two timing belts must be installed smooth side up. Now start at the back and push the end of the timing belt through the slot provided in the foot. Secure the end with the hammerhead nut and screw with the smooth side of the hammerhead nut facing down. Pull the belt with the teeth facing down towards the x-axis frame. The belt must go under the wheel, then over the drive pinion, then back under. It is important to get this right. While making sure there's no twists in the timing belt, then push the end of the belt through the slot in the opposite foot. Pull the belt through with a little tension and then tighten the screw and hammerhead nut and repeat the process on the other rail. Remember all these steps correspond with the steps in the longer assembly manual. Step 5. Bring in the laser. Oh sorry I mean install the laser head. To install the laser head 
you will need the laser head, but also you will require the packet marked step 5. And in that packet, there will be two M5 8mm long thumb screws and two M5 flat washers and two M3 6mm round head screws. The installation here is simple. On the opposite side of the laser head mounting assembly, there are two small holes where you must install the two M36 round head screws, but only install them loose. Those two screws are only there. The head doesn't accidentally fall off. It seems like a good idea to me. It's all getting very exciting now. We're now at the last stage. We're going to install the wiring harness. And the wiring harness is extremely easy to install. You can't really get it wrong. No, but I'm sure some of you will try. But you see, each plug has an orientation in relationship to the socket. You can't put them in the wrong way round. Also, the harness is designed in a way so the cables are the right length. So they won't reach the wrong sockets anyway, those plugs, no. The harness leaves the left hand side of the controller and follows along the left rail to the x-axis frame. Underneath the left hand rail you have your first micro switch. The next plug attaches to the end of the x-axis frame to one of the stepper motors. Then under the x-axis frame to the micro switch. The rest of the cable follows along the x-axis frame towards the carriage assembly where the laser head is. One plug connects to the stepper motor. The second plug connects to the laser head. The harness will need securing and that is done with the use of tie wraps. But don't get overzealous with the tie wraps, no. You have to allow the cable to freely move as the laser head travels through its X and Y axis. Otherwise it'll jam up and it will shut down. So far on this machine, I have tie wrapped the cable in two places on the laser head carriage near the stepper motor. So no cables can pull against the plugs and sockets. I've also tie wrapped the cable at the other stepper motor. We almost have a working laser. The next stage will be setting it up. I suppose a moment of hope and, and hopefully glory is will it turn on. So in conclusion, the Ray 5 20 watt laser was a breeze to put together. And now, I need to learn how to use it. Oh, I do. Oh, my giddy aunt. And as a newbie, oh, crikey. Practice makes perfect. That's what they say, you know. Well, the assembly was simple. Apart from I did make a mistake early on, that I do admit. You just got to remember that the front and rear rails have to be the right way round, okay? On the front, the long gear faces up, as in the name. And on the rear, just the smooth side faces up. But on the left hand side, the increments face up. And on the right hand side, the increments face up. Don't make the mistake I made and put that one the wrong way around and that one on the wrong way around. So I had to do it all again. Yeah, anyway. Other than that, it's actually really easy and you can't really get the bits in the wrong place, if it makes any sense, apart from the rails. Okay? The instructions are okay. They're not, I would say they're the greatest instructions in the world, but they ain't bad. I would like to see the drawings a little bit bigger for people who have got poorer eyesight. That I would. Now, on the whole, so far, the experience, yes, the experience has been a positive one. So, I can't complain. And if you want to know more about the laser, there'll be links down below in the description. Check them out! And if you're subscribing to the channel, there is the little bell icon as well. Because then you will get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another crazy video. 
And I'll be uploading loads of the long gear, a 520 watt laser that I will. Toodaloo!